Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading, or in this case the last six days of reading because I had a vlog that happened last weekend so you'll see the books for that in an upcoming video. So this is my reading week from the 3rd until the 8th of July. I read a total of 11 things, sort of, and I'll talk about the sort of in a moment. Very briefly I want to talk about some review copies that I read this week. I've already reviewed them over on Little Bookish Teacher so you can check out a full review over there. The first one is Wolf Girl 9 Sink or Swim by Ando. This is the continuation of the Wolf Girl series. Obviously nine books in, everything is a spoiler, but this is an ongoing middle grade serial story about a young girl called Gwen who has been separated from her family is by a dystopian type government who has decided to take over the world and she has a pack of dogs as well as a magical wolf with her and in this case they end up stumbling across a village while trying to flee their enemies and they end up having to help out this village who get caught up in the political scheme of this world. It's fun, it's fast paced, each book ends on a cliffhanger so that you are drawn into the next book and each book picks up exactly where it left off in the previous book. So it is a very very popular book series here in Australia and one that I'm enjoying seeing where this story is going. There's a pretty big reveal at the end of the book. Another review copy I received from Alan and Unwin is We Didn't Think It Through by Gary Lonsborough and this is about a group of Indigenous friends who at the very start of the book end up stealing a car and are caught by the police and it is in particular the story of Jamie and his experience getting caught up in the justice system here in Australia which is very confronting particularly if you don't know much about it. Also highlights just how broken the system is. I mean we all know that but to actually have the specifics of it in a story for kids is really really important. The writing in this is incredible, it is a very hard-hitting book, it is difficult to read at times but Gary Lonsborough's writing style is just fantastic and for all of the bleakness that is in this story there is a lot of hope and there are side characters who are working to help Jamie discover that this doesn't have to be his future path and I appreciated that. So thank you to Alan and Unwin for both of those books. The next three books I want to talk about, two I didn't actually read this week, I've been reading them over the last couple of months and they were going to be for a vlog that I'm no longer doing so I'm just going to talk about all of them here because I read the third book this week and that is the Saint of Steel series by T. Kingfisher which is one of Heather's favourite book series and I read mostly because I knew she loved them and I was able to find the audiobooks on Libby and the narration in this series in the audiobooks are great because I actually read this entire series purely on audiobook which is not something I normally do. The first book is Paladin's Grace, this is Stephen and Grace's story. In this world our heroes in all three books are paladins and paladins are soldiers for gods and in this case we find out at the start of the series that the Saint of Steel who Stephen and Istvan and Galen, our three heroes, their god has died and paladins have a unique connection to their gods and so when their god dies they're connected to him and they feel that death and it triggers the berserker rage that they are known for. And this book takes place years later. The surviving paladins of the Saint of Steel have been taken in by, oh I've forgotten what it's called, the rat. The rat god. And this this organization is kind of like the civil servants, the ones who are just trying to help everyone out. And there are only a few remaining paladins and all of them are broken because when they went to, into the berserker rage many of them died, many of them killed many people because they, they couldn't stop themselves. And so there's a lot of guilt and a lot of grief left over in them and, and Stephen carries a lot of that. And then he meets Grace who is a perfumer who is on the run and has a history that she is trying to keep in the past. And the two of them get caught up in this mystery where bodies are turning up without heads and they get drawn into it and they start investigating. And this mystery continues into the second book which is Paladin's Strength and this is Istvan and Clara's story. And Istvan is now on the hunt to track down who is behind these mysterious deaths. And along the way he ends up meeting Clara who is a nun with a secret. That secret being that she might be some kind of paranormal shifter type animal and it is fantastic. I really liked those two stories. It's been a while since I've read them so full details I'm a little bit sketchy on because it's, it's been a couple of months but I read Paladin's Hope this week and I absolutely loved it. This one is very different in tone I think to the other two in that we are following Galen and Galen we know is probably one of the more withdrawn paladins like he's fun and funny and outgoing but he has his own demons that he has not been able to work through yet and he suffers from night terrors from everything that happened when the Saint of Steel died because he was at one of the last battles and he was one of very very few survivors from there and it's his relationship with Piper who's a leaf who's a like doctor and this is an MM romance. It feels very much like a locked room romance because they end up investigating some mysterious deaths that are separate to the ones in the previous two. And these strange deaths are, you know, revealed to them by Anol who used to be part of the city guard. And so it's 
the Knoll and Galen and Piper basically deciding to take matters into their own hands to try and figure out what's going on. And they end up stumbling across this old house that reveals secrets about the history of this world. And the guy that lives in the house ends up trapping them inside with a series of traps that they have to beat to try and see if they can uncover the secrets. And so they're stuck, they can't get out, they have to go forward through all of the traps. And so it's a very contained sort of story, which I appreciated. I'm not explaining it at all well, and this is part of the reason why I don't just do audiobooks, because I do struggle to retain a lot of specific details. But I just love the story, and I loved Piper and Galen, and the way that they have to really overcome a lot of things. But I think the most important thing about this story was how much information we got about the Knolls, who are not human, and are a race that quite often just roll their eyes at humans for human behavior because they can't understand why humans are so dense. I always like characters like that. And it does really deal with Galen and Piper standing up for the Knolls and building that connection with that community, which I really loved. So great series, highly recommend the audios. Look Heather, you made me read a fantasy romance. I also read the Queer and Cute anthology. This came out last week and it is a collection of queer meet cutes. And I had a bit of a laugh while I was reading some reviews of this on Goodreads because a lot of people read this because Emily Rath has a short story in here and it is the meet cute between Rachel's brother and his partner and I really liked it. It was a great short story. Kelly R. Reynolds also has a story in here which was the other reason why this anthology was on my radar. But when I was reading the Goodreads reviews everyone was going, well I'm really disappointed because it's not a full story, it's only the meet cute. I'm like, this is the entire premise of the anthology, it is meet cutes. So do not go into it expecting a full romance. But there are some really fun stories in here. Not everything was for me and I think there might have been two stories that I started and didn't end up finishing because I just wasn't interested in them. But considering there's something like 35 plus stories in here, I really enjoyed this anthology and I love this cover. I love the colours on it. I had a lot of fun with this. You can definitely download it as an ebook and all proceeds are going to queer charities. Also, just for the people who like to know these things, there are a significant number of sapphic meat cutes in here as well, more so than I was expecting because there is quite a diverse range of meat cutes, but a lot of them, I think it was really heavy on the sapphic meat cutes. All right, and then I went down my Eden Finley rabbit hole. I totally blame Robin for this. So I have decided to go back and read the Eden Finley and Saxon James universe as close to order as I can because why not? I just need to read things that I want to read at the moment and this is where I am. So I started with the Fake Boyfriend series which was the very first Eden Finley series that I ever read. I've started reading it back in 2019. I didn't realize that I had started back then but you know this is where we are. It is an MM series. They are sports romances and they feature athletes who play in various sports. So book one is Fake Out. This is the story of Maddox and Damon. At the very start of the book Maddox is confronted with an ex-girlfriend who he broke up with because he told her that he was gay when that was not the case. And she is now engaged and she invites him and his boyfriend to her wedding, which means he has to go back to his small hometown and bring a boyfriend. Enter Damon, who is a former baseball player, who is also an up and coming sports agent. He is gay and he's the brother of Maddox's best friend. And so he is convinced to go along with Maddox and he is not particularly happy about it. He doesn't really want to be someone's first experience and thinks the whole fake dating thing is an issue. But he goes along and they end up getting along really great. And Maddox begins to explore his sexuality. This book is really important because it sets up Damon, who is a really significant character in all of the books in this series, but also in subsequent series as well for being a sports agent. The second book is Trick Play. This is Noah and Matt's book. Matt is a very, very successful NFL player who has been outed by the media. So that is a content warning about forced outing. Damon ends up becoming his sports agent. And in order to sort of rehab the image that the media is trying to present of Noah, Damon suggests that he have a fake boyfriend that just makes everyone feel better about everything. Enter Damon's friend Noah, who is incredibly rich. He comes from a family of money and is a bit of a playboy and loves to have fun. And together they set out to prove that Matt can be gay and still be a great footballer and to challenge a lot of the stereotypes that people might have about queer men in sports. This is really fun because Noah is just a very light has a very lighthearted personality and becomes really determined to help Matt. Then there is Deke, which is the first of the ho of two hockey books in the series. This one is about Ollie and Lennon, and Ollie and Lennon are one of my favorite couples that Eden Finley has written. So Ollie is an NHL superstar who accidentally outs himself to a stranger in a restaurant bathroom, and he doesn't realize that the stranger that he has outed himself to is a sports journalist. But Lennon, thankfully, is a very good guy. We met him in the previous book. He recognizes Ollie straight away, and Ollie is freaking out because his parents are very 
pro-queer and they want him to come out and they're super supportive to the extent that it's actually becoming really tough on Ollie. And Lennon offers to be his fake boyfriend for his parents in the restaurant to get them off his case. And so they do that and then they part ways and then they don't see each other for a while and until they see each other again at an event hosted by mutual friends and they're forced back into each other's orbit and they have a genuine attraction to one another, they genuinely like each other, which is of course strained when Ollie realises that Lennon is a sports journalist, particularly when he's been writing about hockey recently and Ollie has not been a fan of his articles, but the more time that they spend together the more they begin to understand one another and it was just really lovely. The other thing I forgot to mention while talking about Deke was there is a really great scene when Ollie and Lennon are visiting with Ollie's parents and the pressure that Ollie's parents have put on him to be, you know, the best queer man in sports really comes to a head because they mean really well. They're very supportive and they want him to succeed and they can't understand why other people don't see that. And there is a fantastic scene where Lennon points out the reality of being queer in sports, particularly being queer in very high profile sports. And it's a sequence that I haven't quite seen in other books as well. So I'd forgotten about it, but it was one of those scenes that when I read it, I went, no, hang on, this was why I liked the book the first time that I read it. And I will say at the end of the book, there is another forced outing of a character, not Ollie, but in solidarity of that other player, Ollie comes out at the same time as him in support. And that character is Soren, who is the main character from book Five. In book four we switch back to football and it is called Blindsided. This is Talon and Miller's book. This is not a fake dating book and Eden Finley was very very clear that this book wasn't supposed to exist but writing Talon and Miller who were side characters in book two they became very popular and were also begging to have their own story told and this is a really fun story because this is a friends to lovers story. Talon and Miller went to college together, they got up to all sorts of antics including sharing partners. Talon went off to play in the NFL and Miller eventually made his way up into the NFL as well. And suddenly they are finally on the same team and things aren't quite what they were like in college and then Miller is injured and really their relationship develops over the course of Miller being injured and living in New York and this long distance relationship developing and it's great because it's these two guys figuring out what their relationship is. Miller is very comfortably aware that he is bi, Talon doesn't realise that and he works his way into it and he doesn't freak out about it which is nice. It just takes him a while to figure it out. And then there is Hattrick which is book five and this one is Soren's story. So Soren the, the NHL player who was outed in book three and it is his second chance relationship with Matt's younger brother Jet. Now there is a 10 year age gap between the two of them and what we find out is that somewhere in a previous book these two had a one night stand. This is told through flashbacks initially at the start of the book, but those flashbacks do eventually die off. It's only a couple of chapters. Jet is an up and coming musician who becomes a rock star in the three year gap between the one night stand and the time that they made up again. In the present day, all of the previous couples from this series, they're on holiday in Fiji. They've invited Soren along. He's recently just broken up with his boyfriend who was not good for him. And suddenly Jet turns up and it brings up all of the feelings from three years ago where they had this really great connection. But Soren freaked out a little bit when he found out Jet was Matt's brother and there was such a big age difference. Now that they're both single and both healing from recent heartbreaks, they're, they're trying to figure out what they are to one another. Jet has tried to escape being on tour because he has been sleeping with the lead singer from the headliner act, but he knows it's not a good relationship and he's trying to get away from that. And then of course he's confronted with sorry, who he's wanted since their one night stand. And the way they work through it is just great. And in the end, Soren goes on tour with Jet in the off season and they try and make this thing work and they have to communicate because suddenly Soren's back training and no longer on the road and they're separated, it's long distance and it opens up so many opportunities for miscommunication and they have those moments and then they have to sort it out. And the other thing that I appreciated about this book, they spend quite a bit of time thinking about what they want from their careers because Soren is t heading towards the end of his career, he's in his mid-30s and he knows that you know he's probably not going to be playing for much longer and he has to decide on what terms he is going to live out the last years of his career and whether or not his love for Jet has any impact on that. So it was really interesting and I think the series as a whole is really fun, really light-hearted. It does deal with homophobia in the sports industry but it also has a lot of people who are really positive about people coming out and in many ways this series was probably my first introduction into sports romance and then everything just spiraled over the last couple of years. I was really glad I went back and reread it. I'm currently reading the breakaway short stories that fit in between the books 
and then there is one more book I think it's called Final Play which is sort of the the wrap-up of the series and then I'll move on to whatever is next in my little Satan verse diagram. The other thing that I read were the first two books in the Carolina Comets series by Tegan Hunter because Izzy and I have been talking about them. I think we've both read books six and seven so she has gone back and read the first couple of books and then told me that they were really fantastic so I went back and read them as well. The first book is Pukshai and this is Colin and Harper's book. Colin is driving back from his parents place heading back for the pre-season training when his car breaks down quite literally in the middle of nowhere and the only car that comes along is Harper. She nearly runs him over but then gives him a lift and they get along great. They banter and they have plenty of great conversations and then eventually she drops him off. They're both attracted to one another but neither of them make a move on it. They don't have last names and they don't have contact details and they just sort of go their separate ways and both of them regret that. And then both of them end up signing up for a dating app on the advice of friends. Colin stumbles across Harper's profile and he recognizes her profile. She doesn't know who he is on the other end and they start up this conversation. So there is that element of catfishing because for a while he doesn't tell her. He thinks about it and he he knows he should do it, he just doesn't. He, there's something that's stopping him from telling her. And then of course they figure it out and there is a very natural, very reasonable reaction to her finding out that he has been lying to her for a significant period of time. Because the other thing that he didn't tell her while they were in the car was that he was a hockey player because she has absolutely zero interest in hockey. I love Harper as a character, she is just awesome. She makes horror props and is just a very cool character. And there is also a really fantastic grand gesture scene as well, which I really loved. And then I read Blind Pass, which is book two and is possibly one of my favorite books that I've read so far out of the series. This is Ryan and Rhodes' story. So we met Rhodes in the first book and Ryan. Ryan is Harper's best friend and Rhodes is a defenseman for the team and in his teens, he was injured while playing hockey and has a scar down his face from the injury. He kind of keeps him, keeps to himself and his look because he he's self-conscious of what he looks like and people call him the beast and so that's sort of entered his psyche and it's something that he's not a fan of but has to deal with. And they're in Vegas and Ryan is drunk and Rhodes takes her out of the bar and to a diner to get some food into her to help her sober up and the two end up talking and they confide a lot in one another and then they go out and they get drunk together and then they get married in Vegas. And then they wake up because they had posted about their marriage on social media and suddenly there is a huge social media storm about this wedding. And they have to decide whether or not they're going to continue this marriage and they, in the end they decide they have to because one, it's not gonna look good if they suddenly claim it was a joke. Rhodes has his career to think about. Ryan is a social media influencer. She does makeup and she's also a photographer. And so they agree to stay married for a year, which means they have to get to know one another. They're forced into proximity and living together. And the more they spend time with one another, despite the fact that initially they spent a lot of their conversations antagonizing one another, they realize that once they look beneath the surface of each other's character, there's a lot there that they like. What I should have said is this is very much a contemporary Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's excellent. And there is a really truly gorgeous scene at one of Ryan's installation art galleries, uh, gallery showing. She does a lot of interactive work where she will set up conditions for people to talk about their feelings and then photograph them. And we saw that in the first book, but in this one, she invites Rhodes to participate in it. And for the first time she realizes just why he is the way that he is. And she just begins to fall for him here. And it was just one of the most beautiful scenes. Like this book is the sweetest and I, I will own a physical copy of this book because I absolutely adored it. So those are the books that I have read this week in the comments. I would love to know if you have read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Otherwise, feel free to share something you have been reading and loving. Or if you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a camera emoji down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.